Ken Wilber has done wonderful service to the world, introducing consciousness studies. The other day I was watching one of the videos that he is able to uh, put himself through an experiment. He was connected to an EEG machine and then uh, show that how the beta waves are related to the thinking process. The alpha waves are more alert um, stages of consciousness, relaxed state. And delta more like a deep, a dreamless sleep state. And this you can see on the screen, on the monitor. If you are clouded, confused, it's all beta waves. And this is a very important thing to know. The TM people have done a lot of research on that too, to relate uh, brain waves to conscious states of uh, mind. And how when you are more relaxed and more calm, then you create more, more coherent waves. However, there is a, a very important question, and that is these brain waves, or even uh, psychological um, results, are uh, not going to do a lot of help. They, uh, they can produce a very relaxed state of mind or even may give you more intelligence. I want to give you two examples of giants in, the, in spirituality. One is Sri Aurobindo. Sri Aurobindo spent his entire life in trying to uh, make the body mortal to bring the light to those walls so that the human race can evolve to a, the next level. See, he locked himself up for uh, 40 years, coming out uh, once in four months. He wrote a lot of things about his own discovery, but then his body was deteriorating, becoming old, and then finally he died. One of his realizations was these psychological things can give you maybe a psychological enlightenment, if you will. But there is no enlightenment for the body because the body seems to follow a different um, path, if you will. So then you have to ask the question, uh, is there a way that uh, the body and uh, the psychology can evolve at the same time so that when you have a psychological enlightenment, you will also have the enlightenment of the body? Arbindo said that he was personally interested in Swami Ramalingam, that was my previous birth, who was able to do that. The second example that I am going to refer to, who had some sort of a psychological uh, enlightenment, is Ramana Maharshi. Ramana Maharshi spent his entire life doing only one meditation. He did not care for God or anything. He only cared only for one thing, that is 
to ask the question, who am I? So all his meditations and all he taught centered around this question of asking, who am I? Who am I? Recently somebody showed me in India some of his, uh, the bus tickets that he had used. He, I, he used to write on the bus, on the back of the bus tickets, who am I, who am I, who am I? Uh, that is being collected now for his museum in his ashram. So he was very honest about it, but then what happened was that he developed cancer, a very painful cancer. He roared in pain, you know, that had a lot of documentation on it and died. So the physical challenge is always there about the body. If the body has its own path of evolution, if so, what is it? That's why I recommend the Siddha tradition, that's which this is my own tradition, which recommends that physical enlightenment or the body enlightenment and the mind enlightenment should go in hand in hand. Otherwise, one will be deluding oneself. The Siddhas of my tradition are so uh, uncompromising on their attitude to enlightenment. The enlightenment should be both physical as well as mental. Otherwise, it will be a delusion. So you have to read uh, the Tamil Siddhas. They just found many, many ways of evolving the body to become, to come to the level of the spirit. There are herbs, there are mantras, there are practices with light techniques that they employed to evolve the body simultaneously. I think this, the method of the Siddhas, see, is really the complete package, represents a complete package for a body and mind enlightenment.